And that was the uncomfortable Hi, I'm dead air. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm Jack. And I'm Lauren. And we are Dead Air, by which I mean Clib Shark. We're back after three weeks. If you want to join on the conversation, the number to call is 215-486-2125. Or if you have Skype, call Jenga Ship, and maybe we'll let you in on the conversation. Uh, but first, as always, or at least as often as we can, we have the lovely, the talented, the amazing Oboe Crazy, here to do a little something that we call This Week in Geek. How are you, Obo? I'm the only one that's not married yet. I should remedy that as quickly as possible. First, the Punisher is coming to Daredevil. That's right. The Punisher is coming to Daredevil. Because the fight sequences in, the pun in Daredevil weren't brutal enough. So they're adding the Punisher. Uh, and we have casting. Walking Dead alum John Bernthal has landed the role. We don't know anything else. That's it. We know the Punisher is coming to Daredevil, and it's John Bernthal, and that's about it. We'll have to wait until Daredevil Season 2, so begin your speculation now. Uh, other things that we have less speculation about, these are both science fact, science fiction stories that made me smile first, Laser rifles. Things like laser blasters and laser beams and laser stuff. Lasers don't actually make noise. It's one of those sad facts of science. They, they don't actually pew, pew. And Boeing wants to fix that for a, a very good reason. Uh, Boeing's High Energy Laser Mobile Demonstrator, which is LMD, uses silent invisible laser beams, which basically mean you don't know if it's gone off, if it's been shot if it hit anything until something actually explodes. So Boeing wants to add Star Wars sound effects to their laser beams so that they know when it fires. Ideally, the tech would be used to blast drones or enemy missiles out of the sky with a 10 kilowatt fiber laser that should be extremely precise. But in testing, engineers are sometimes not even sure if the weapon was working because obviously they couldn't see it and they couldn't hear it. Um, from the uh, actual Boeing site, quote, the engagements happen quickly, and unless you're staring at a screen 24-7, you'll never see them. So we've built sound in for whenever we fire the laser. We're planning on taking advantage of lots of Star Trek and Star Wars sound bites. End quote. That's right. Boeing is making the future possible by adding Star Trek and Star Wars sound bites to lasers. I love Boeing so much. In other taking science and adding sound to it news, the Large Hadron Collider. We're all very familiar with it. It's that big giant thing that people keep thinking is going to turn into a black hole and has not yet. It's uh, considered one of the greatest scientific creations of all time and is now creating music. It turns out that compositions of the Geneva-based multi-billion pound particle collider sounds like minimalist music from Philip Glass. The piece was created through a process called data sonification, which turns raw data into long lines of musical notes. These are then structured and arranged by Dr. Domic Domenico Vincenzi, who is a scientist from Angelica Ruskin University and obviously an amateur musician. As a starting point, he used three graphs of data from the Large Hadron Collider that has been presented in a paper. And just in case you want to know, the paper was called, quote, Observation of a new particle in the search for the standard model Higgs boson with the Atlas detector at the LHC, end quote. And you can go and check out all of this data. It was mapped onto a, a D minor and then an F major scale using vertical positions as points, creating long lines of melodies and harmonies. And then they basically cut and pasted these four and eight note phrases into a piece of music. If you do a search for this, uh, specifically on Classic FM, you can actually hear a bit of the piece. They're going to be using the full piece. Um, it was actually commissioned by the Atlas Experiment at CERN in Switzerland, and they're putting out a new film on the Large Hadron Collider, and this is going to be part of the music for the background of the film, which is pretty cool. And if you go listen to it, if you weren't told ahead of time that it was music that was created by... Uh, sampling data from a scientific experiment, you might not get it, partially because it's kind of cool and partially because I think they did a really good job of arranging and listening to it. It's a MIDI orchestra, and it's super cool, and you should definitely go listen to it. 
That's all for this week in Geek. I'm Obo Crazy, and when they take Glip Shark and turn it into music, there's going to be a lot of uh, four minutes and 33 seconds worth of silence. <laughs> the world is indeed a strange place. If you have a fact you want read live and on the air, you can send it to lauren at obocrazy.com or go to our website, which is glibshark.com, full of past episodes of Glib Shark, Jenga Jam, Buttcast, and occasional ramblings and, uh, and game pictures. And, and streams of Destiny, as it turns out. Yeah, a few of those. And I, I think one of the things that I really like doing about streaming Destiny, and one of the best things about it, I'm not that interesting, but occasionally I game with interesting people. And you really get some awesome clips. And if you check out our YouTube page uh, for Glib Shark, you will see some of these clips starring me and our good friend Noobs. And one of the newest employees of Rooster Teeth, Lauren, a.k.a. Doodles. And we have fun, we screw around in the raid, we blast people with shotguns, and then say, wow, that was as awesome as killing Bambi's mom. <laughs> so I, love the I, I love the idea that you're wandering around in Destiny basically as the Walter Cronkite of Destiny. You're just wandering around, picking up interesting people, playing with them and doing these little interviews, and then moving on to other people. No, no, it's not, it's not interviews. It's... It, no, no. It's just people being... Uh, for example, there's a really easy, now, part of the raid of the Vault of Glass. It's the Gorgon Maze. And there is a video where we spend 10 minutes in the Gorgon Maze. You should not spend 10 minutes in the Gorgon Maze at this point. Everyone knows how it works. Everyone's done it lots and lots of times. And if you haven't, you're probably doing it with someone who has. Lauren decided to fire rockets at the Gorgons for no reason. <laughs> or actually, she did have a reason. It was the lulls. There was actually one point, <laughs> and it's one of my favorite things that's ever happened in Destiny. After I had been like, all right, there's no screwing around. Everyone stay on me. Let's get this done. And I was kind of like play angry, but also kind of a little angry. And then, so we're going around, and Lauren's like, this would be the time to cue the rockets. <laughs> and one of our other people was like, I'm out of ammo. And here we go. I'm not whoosh rocket fires mm. and, and yeah it's actually I, I was going to edit it down but Lauren encouraged me to just release it uncut just so you know how futile that attempt was and I'm really glad I, I kept it as is because it, it's pretty funny as much as the internet has a short attention span 10 minutes is still short enough that I, I think she was right you didn't have to cut it down yeah, it was, and, and it's got kind of a little story to it. There are some other ones where the clips are better at like two or three minutes or even less than that, but, but that one definitely stood out. So I'm really hoping to stream more, and now that I've kind of got my internet issues worked out, more or less, uh, you'll probably be seeing me or the entire cast now that Jack is playing Destiny. Yay! So, Jack, well, what are you playing? What's your well, class? Um, so I chose the, uh, the Warlock class, and Good I wanted man. the Awoken, and uh, I made my, gave myself a little high hair, uh, nothing too fancy there. I, I'm on level two, so I'm literally, I've played it for all of a half an hour. Okay. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, you know, getting into story mode a little bit more, and actually doing some multiplayer for sure uh, once I'm, I don't know, level four, level five, like Roadblock, what, what do you think I need to be at before I'm, I, I jump in with the big boys? You're going to need to be at least... So the way Destiny works is you can join just about any activity as long as you are of level. If I wanted to, I could bring one of my maximum level guys and join your level 2 dude in one of your story missions that you're playing because oh. I am of level. Generally, I think if an activity is three levels above you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Lauren, three levels above you, you cannot join it. So right now, if there's a level 7 mission, you would not, or a level, I'm sorry, level 5 mission, you wouldn't be able to join. Yeah, it just says it's way too hard for you. Well, no, no, you just can't. It, yeah. it doesn't let you. And then when you start getting into the realm of, oh, okay, I'm now two levels down. I can't remember if it's two or three. I'm, I don't remember. I don't remember either. But uh, really, it's unimportant. You're right. You're, you're going to want to just play through the story Occasionally, we'll probably join you on one of your strikes because strikes are, are pretty low level and don't really scale. Uh, at least the normal ones don't. The things are going to get interesting when you hit 20. And that's really when you start moving to the end game. So the lowest level raid is a level 26. 
And so you'll want to be level 24 before we can take you on that. And you're gotcha. definitely wanna, gonna wanna come with us because it's a raid that, is, that we've done lots and lots of times and we will keep doing lots and lots of times because it is just too much fun. Hmm. It really, it, it just like, I, there are very few things in entertainment that are perfect. And I think in video games, the Vault of Glass is one of the most perfect group activities just in video games, period. If you have six friends and you all love each other and you want to go have some fun, the first Destiny Raid, Vault of Glass, is definitely the way to go. It is, it is just hard enough to be challenging. It, is, it takes teamwork. And even if you've done it lots and lots of times, it's still so much fun. That's my praise. Uh, although I didn't want to gloss over something that you mentioned before. I didn't realize that Lauren Crozier now works for Rooster Teeth. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, she actually, uh, she had been talking with the guys for a while, and I, uh, just on a selfish note, I'm glad I can talk about this now. <laughs> I've been holding this close to my vest for a little while, so now, when she made the announcement, I think, four days ago. She's actually been in Austin, I think, for a week and a half, two weeks. She, she, her first weekend is Aust in Austin was the weekend I left for the cruise. Mm. So, uh, she's been in town a bit, and now she is uh, doing work for... Rooster Teeth animation in earnest. I think I have an idea of what she's working on, but I don't know if she said. So uh, you'll just have to wait and see. And that actually will get us into the panel talk later because I'm pretty sure she's going to be on a, on a panel or two as a Rooster Teeth animator. Well, that's Which very exciting. Awesome. On yeah. behalf of the entire show, I want to congratulate you, Lauren. We're super happy for you. And if that continues our long and distinguished line of guests who we have had on as friends and awesome people before they were discovered by either Rooster Teeth or the internet in general and went on to be famous. It's that glib shark rub. Literally a week after Hannah Hart was on the show, which is like almost four years ago to the day, I believe, uh, she's on Time Magazine, which is nuts. So when's but it going to happen to us? We, ah! Well, we, well, we're working on it. We're yeah. kingmakers, but we are not ourselves kings. <laughs> But uh, I'm just, uh, it's, it's so awesome, and I, I'm probably going to go down and see her in a few weeks. Uh, just, just pop in, say hi. Nice. Yeah. Tell her we love her. I will. Most indeedly. Can we talk about Halo uh, 5 for a second? Absolutely. Because they just announced that IGN, um, or I'm sorry, Game Informer is going to be having their cover story all about Halo 5, and a bunch of new information has started to leak. And us talking about multiplayer stuff reminded me that I wanted to talk about something awesome that they've said. So Halo 5 is going to drop with 20 multiplayer maps, which is a lot. I mean, previous Halo games and a lot of uh, other online multiplayer games, if you get half as many, you're lucky. Not only that, and this is the really, really super cool thing, they're going to be offering an additional 15 maps as DLC for no charge. That's right. If you buy Halo in June of 2016, you'll get another 15 maps, and the DLC is going to cost you absolutely nothing. And the reason they gave is, is a reason that makes a lot of sense. When you have map packs and paid content, it divides the player base. And suddenly, these people can't play with those people if they want to play in these maps, and these people can't connect over here. So they're just going to make the maps free for everybody, which I think is kind of awesome. I am definitely looking forward to Halo 5. I have actually we've had some good times in, in the Master Chief collection and the mix of the different Halos. I know one of our favorite activities to do on our Friday night drunken Halo nights was pistols on Hang 'em High. <laughs> and oh my god, you just, after everyone has had a couple of drinks and people still can, can be dead eyes from across that stupid map. It's just too much fun. And I will say <laughs> that uh, even if I wasn't winning it half the time, like actually half the time, noobs, I'm coming to get your ass. He's, <laughs> he's my rival. Actually, I, I, I say that. I think, I think Hank, uh, not only is it one of my favorite map types and game types in Master Chief Collection, I think it actually has a pretty even win rate. I know Izzy's won a couple of times. I've won a couple of times. Lauren, obviously... Noobs. Hell, I think Lammy has won a couple of times. 
And that's saying something. Sorry. Uh, one, one of these days, I'm going to get home before 9 o'clock Pacific, and you guys are still going to be on, and I'm going to join you, and it's going to be awesome. And then I'm just going to have to catch up with the drinking. We'll have to do that. Now that, now that we're... Now that Jack is, is a Destiny player, we definitely have to, have to do some, some nights where instead of the show as this, we're streaming the show in a Skype call and it's the three of us like doing strikes or something. That or, sounds good to me. Or shepherding uh, us through Halo or joining a bunch of friends and playing Hang 'em High Pistols or whatever. I'm, I'm totally up for occasional Lib Shark game night, but I'm just talking on a regular basis joining you guys for pistols. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I've got um, my my friend base is all over the place with games, and sometimes finding enough people playing one game at one time is super hard. And honestly, like I had this, and nice to see technology's caught up with the idea to be able to do the show and you know stream gaming at the same time. I remember we tried to do episode fifty. Halo with Finch, and I remember just how bad the audio was because of the wireless headsets con- con- conflicting with the uh, the phone sound and everything like that. I mean, it was a fun episode, and Finch is a great guy and a great guest, but I think, unfortunately, the audio like dragged us down. So now that's not, not an issue anymore, so that's, that's kind of cool. And it, it's nice because we can, we can join a Skype. Like, I can still host a Skype call, still have it go through the stream, but instead of connecting through our computer mics or whatever, we just connect via the Skype app. Yep. And, and it'll work just fine. We actually, one of the nights that we were doing our Drunken Halo night, Xbox Live was having issues, and one of those issues was party chat. But not only party chat, but game chat. Yep. So we actually, Noobs is a real engineer, and I'm an engineer in title only, but we figured out how to work around the Xbox Live Skype issues by hosting an actual Skype call on an external PC, uh, a PC that Noobs had, and then having that call, like, call everyone on their Xbox app. Or, or we called Noobs or something. It, it, I forget the way it worked because I was drinking. And, <laughs> but it, it worked. And so in spite of these issues that Xbox Live was having in general, we were still able to connect and play and have fun, and, and it was totally rad. Well, I, I see a drunken Glib Shark Halo night coming up soon. Absolutely. Yes. So what else have you guys been playing? Well, aside from... Well, let me say, I actually downloaded the Minecraft uh, app for Xbox and uh, died in that a little bit. And it's neat that they have different music and different things I didn't see in the Xbox 360 version. Like the horses and stuff. I, I was able to ride a horsey, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, it's yeah. super fun. I actually... <laughs> there was oh god I've died so many times in that dumb game I'm still <laughs> on the recovery from my last wipe yeah the the uh, Xbox One app I think is caught up through um, a bunch of the different editions more so than the 360 and it wouldn't surprise me if they stop updating the, the 360 and, uh, pretty soon and they just switch over to the One but then again, they've got Minecraft on pretty much everything that has a screen, so you never know. That's true. And the other thing I've been playing is uh, Mortal Kombat X. And uh, it brought back, you know, the 11-year-old me was very excited to see that how far technology has gotten in terms of those fatalities. <laughs> They're pretty brutal. Yeah, some of the videos of those are insane. Well, we've, actually... we've talked about that before. Yeah, I've watched the videos of just the fatalities. Oh, yeah, they're pretty rough. Well, I actually people ha- who like that like that. So I have oh. something I wanted to bring up. Oh, I am proud to announce that Glib Shark has been approved for a panel at RTX 2015. Yay! Huzzah! So now we have to figure out what we're going to do for an hour. <laughs> well, your pa- that panel is going to be more difficult to put together. Mine is pretty easy because I'm proud to announce that uh, Glib Shark will be doing another D&D game at RTX, and this time it will be an actual panel in a panel room. We have Hooray! two panels. That's right. How oh, many people God. have two panels that don't work for Rooster Teeth? That's a pretty well, big deal. That's um, only two panels if you talk about panels with the name Glib Shark on them. If you start talking about uh, how many people in this room are on a bunch of different panels. Roadblock, I'm pretty sure you're on, what, 27 panels? I it- am. 
Well, I didn't know. I, I, I figured, but I hadn't heard for sure that your panel had gotten approved. So that's four. For me. <laughs> so we have the Glib Shark proper plan- panel. Then we have the Glib Shark D and D at night. And I might, I might have to wear find a like leisure robe since it's D and D at after dark, and and go all leisure suit on on everyone just cuz. <laughs> But you're not going to cosplay as your I'm as your cosplaying wizard? as a as a playboy ne'er do well perverted D and D player. That's what I'm cosplaying as, which actually isn't too far from the truth. Uh, that's just <laughs> what you are. So, okay, so those two, and then what are the other two, two panels? I, I am also proud to announce that a panel that I had submitted uh, got approved. It's uh, it's called Capturing the Community, and it is a community photography panel. And it features our good friend John Sedlak, our good friend Nathan uh, Nathaniel Hayden, our good friend Connor McRae, and our good friend Dominic Dobransky. So basically for an hour, no one's going to be taking pictures outside of one panel. <laughs> it, that is a challenge. <laughs> and I knew this going in. And it is going to be tough since, since both Connor and Nathan are pretty big photogs. I think they have other photogs. I know one of the guys that was doing it last year isn't doing it this year, and I don't think that Sedlak is No, at all. John is not officially a guardian this, this coming year. And, so. I, and I know Dom is, but he usually doesn't do photography. But, but we're, we're asking Nathan and Connor to be in the same spot at the same time, so that might be tough, but, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Well, the and universe they, they might were able explode. To, they coexisted at Event Redacted, just saying. Well, no, no, but yes. they, they, weren't, they both weren't working. Or I guess they were, but... But they, they were working they the same event. An entire event, like a, a a massive convention. They only yeah. needed to be around you and Unju. And <laughs> so did true. everybody else. So it was easy. The way this panel is going to work, and I I am moderating, is we are going to be talking to these guys. We're going to introduce them. We're going to ask how they got started in photography, specifically how they got started taking pictures of the fans of Rooster Teeth, and then we're going to go in a little into depth in in equipment, in events, and how to cover them, and whatever those, those guys want to talk about. The catch is that the entire panel is only going to be up during the introductions. After that, we're going to rotate between the panelists, not me, I'm just going to be moderating. They are going to be wandering around the audience taking pictures of the people who show up to the panel. And then afterward, we are hoping to ho- host a community photo shoot. So if you have a costume, or you're there with your bow, or you're there with your boo, or you're there with your bay, you can come and have your picture taken by some amazing photographers for free. And we'll probably do it for half an hour, hour, depending on how many people we get and where people need to go. At that point, I'll probably help out a little bit. But that's kind of what we're going for, is, is that is that kind of deal, like photography in relation to the community. And I'm really looking forward to it. And how much are you charging for the photos? Uh, Absolutely nothing. Yeah, that sounds like a sweetheart deal. Yeah. You can just come out, and if you've got an awesome costume and you want a picture by by someone who has been prominently featured in Rooster Teeth various medias, like Connor or Nathan or one of those guys, they'll do it for you. It's it's a great opportunity. And then the the Sorry, last panel that I'm on is actually a podcast production panel uh, being hosted by our good friend Joseph Dunlap. And I'm on there with a few other community podcasters, and we're going to be talking about how our shows get made. My favorite part oh, is going to be watching uh, everybody go for, because that's, that's my favorite thing about watching for professional photographers or even semi-professionals is the the you know be on one knee and staying out of everybody's way and then stand up to take a picture and then back down stand up to take a picture and back down and i i love watching that because i think it's amusing and awesome at the same time it's going to be a lot of fun and we'll see we're going to have a bunch of nice people to promote it and obviously we're going to be promoting it here along with our other panels and once the schedule is out we will let you guys know but I, I am super excited, and I, I don't think I'm on a fifth panel. No one's told me, but I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> but give it some time. Maybe they've just been waiting to get confirmation that they got accepted before they ask you. I mean, as, as it stands now, the D&D game is just officially the three of us, 
Uh, we need to find our other two players, as well as uh, this year, now that the panel's been approved, I can say for sure, the thing we're going to do for the charity auction at... Uh, on Thursday night will be um, basically the same thing we did the first year we did the D&D game, which is you can bid to be the monster, the boss monster for a moment or two, which is you'll come up on stage and you'll pick what power you want to use, you want me to use, you'll pick who you want us to attack and you will roll the dice. You'll get to be the monster. And if it's anything like a metal dragon from a couple of years ago, you will roll a natural 20 and it will be amazing. Yeah. So, so we need to secure our two other people. So for all you know, you may be suddenly asked to be on six, seven, twelve other panels. Uh, we'll we'll see. I uh, and Jack is uh, is dealing with some contact lens issues, so he will be back just as soon as he can. I I am just. I was actually thinking about on the way home. How many panels have I been on personally at RTX? And my initial thought was, I want to say six, maybe. I, I, I'm not sure. More, many more than I think uh, Jenga and I combined. The last couple of years, I've always had to work Luke's booth. So I've tried to avoid being on too many panels. So basically, it's, it's Glib Shark and the D&D game for me. Um, we'll have to uh, double check with Jenga when he comes back. But you, you probably have double the number of panels Jenga and I have together. Yeah, like, this year has been weird. Like, uh, since it's not 2007, my internet celebrity has kind of dwindled just a little bit. So I think it's just these two Gloop Shark panels for, for me as far as being on. As far as attending panels, though, I'm probably going to, I'm going to be at pretty much everyone that you're doing, Jonathan. Um, and in addition to that, like, if I hear my friends are doing something, I'm definitely going to go out and check those things out. Yeah, whatever panel Lauren is on, if she is on, I'm going to be at that. If they get uh, Goose Checker back, I, that's always fun. I'm trying to think, who else? Who the else? Good Doctor. Oh, yeah, The Good Doctor. Hmm. So let me ask you, gentlemen, now that we know that the D&D game is a go, do you want to play your same characters that you did last year? Do you want to play new characters? Well, I'd be I do. okay with the same one, yeah. Yeah. M Jonathan the Magic Muscular, I, li I like it. And then Ar Sterling Mallory the Archer, just a sarcastic, bitter Archer. <laughs> I have to work on my Archer voice, I guess, but if I think I the cadence, I think I'll be I can be okay. Well, you've got a little bit of time. Uh, we'll keep you guys in those roles. We will be moving on to 5th edition. Uh, because 5th edition is awesome, and I have all of the awesome stuff. So uh, if anyone listening at home has any suggestions for our two guest panelists, or guest players in this case, definitely tweet at Glibshark and let us know. Uh, tweet at them as well. Let them know what's going on and <laughs> why their name is suddenly being thrown out there. But uh, we've So got who a are these mystery guest players? We're still we're, working on it. We're still uh, working on it. I have, although I have, I, I have an interesting suggestion that I'm going to put into the chat real quick. Okay. I do have one person who was at Event Redacted who basically said, yes, me, 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 Oh, who, that's exciting. Um, I have to get back in touch with and say, so remember at Event Redacted when you said, yes, me, 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 me? Well, now it's a go um, because I think he would be awesome. But I'm definitely open to other suggestions. I know we had suggested some other people last time we talked about this who may no longer be available for reasons. So uh, we'll be working on that, but definitely if anyone has any suggestions of potential players, then let us know. Our only requirements are that they are going to RTX, they are not a Guardian, um, and as much as I would love to have Guardians, um, it's, it's just too much to try to get a Guardian to be able to, to be on the panel. So uh, sadly, they can't be a Guardian, they have to be going to RTX, and they have to be willing to perform in front of a crowd. No previous D&D &D experience is required. I wonder if we could talk brand new Rooster Teeth employee Lauren Crozier into playing. That was actually exactly what I was talking about. Because I know she's, we've mentioned her before. I would love to have her. But now that she's brand new uh, Rooster Teeth employee, I don't know whether she'd be available. But I'd love to ask her. Yeah, I'll bring it up I'll, I'll, when I talk to her next. Uh, the problem is, is now that she's actually busy, it's a lot harder to get in touch with her because when she was at her previous job, she was usually sketching and bored out of her mind. So it was really easy to talk to her on like Facebook Messenger and stuff. And now that she's like at a job, actually working and doing something that she loves, she's a little bit less available. Yep, 
well, you know, we will we'll put the calls out there. We will talk to a bunch of people. We'll see who's available. We'll take suggestions from the audience and uh, more of more news coming soon. And then, of course, we have our own panel we have to put together. I, I need to work on that. I actually got the email when I got data as soon as I got off the ship. So I, I, I had known. And as soon as I found out, I let you guys know and I let the other panelists on, on the Capturing the Community panel know. So we'll see what happens. I need to do a little bit of planning. If there's going to be a short show, I need to put that together. And I really wish I had gotten the chance to film all of us together when we were at Event Redacted. Hey, is last year's, uh, <laughs> what we call it, thing that you were working on done yet or no? Blink, blink. Oh, Awkward like silence. The video that you were, uh, you were working on something in the last RTX. And I don't think I ever saw anything come from it. I don't want to say too much about it, unless you're deliberately being... Oh, he's deliberately being coy. Let's no, I'm actually being coy. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. So I don't, we were filming. I don't remember. We did, we did a significant amount of filming, Oh, actually. that, that. Yes. Yeah, okay. I think that could probably be ready by then. There we go. So yeah, one year in the, in the making. making. That's it. I mean, part I, of me wants to... I liked the last year that we were playing Coup. That was kind of neat. But it would be cool to work in some sort of, like, game show element to there. Like, if we had, like, swags and prizes and we asked, like, audience questions and stuff. I have a small collection of prizes that I've been accumulating every time Amazon has a board game on sale. Mm -hmm. So I've got a few things. If we were to get sponsors, that would be even better. Well, it's, and depending on what order... Sponsors out there. <laughs> <laughs> depending on what order these panels happen in, we can definitely do some D&D &D stuff in prep... Uh, at the Glib Shark panel, if it's before us, right? We can we can work some stuff out, like do some. We we, we can make it funny. I think we'll make it work, and then we'll obviously have uh, we'll probably have some sort of drinking game. Yes, we'll probably have some sort of guest helping us out. Yes, and uh, and we'll we'll go from there. It'll be much. It I if you go to this year's panel, I guarantee you the audience drinking game will be way better. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but our, the way our room is set up, if you if you don't want to sit on the floor of the convention for a little while, you just want a chair to sit in, just come to our panel. And not only do you get to sit in a chair, but you will be entertained for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how long we have. And By veteran panelists and entertainers, no doubt. Yes. By one of the longest running podcasts on the internet today, and the probably longest current running podcast of anyone from the Rooster community. Including Rooster Teeth themselves. Yes. Yeah, we are, what, 100 episodes ahead of the Dunk Tank at this point? Or <laughs> Rooster Teeth Podcast, whatever they're calling it these days? <laughs> I, I think so, yeah. I don't even know what episode we're on, I guessed. It'll always be the Drunk Tank in my heart, though. Okay, we've got a couple minutes left in the show. Has there, has there been anything since Event Redacted that's happened that people wanted to talk about? Do we want to go into Game of Thrones? Do we want to go into Marvel shit? Do we want to go into... To anything else. I was on a boat. You were there on you a go. boat. Tell us about your boat. Where'd you go? I went with my lovely wife to some West Eastern Caribbean destinations. We went to St. Martin, St. Kitts, and I missed an opportunity. Our good friend Abby, aka Bay, had a birthday while I was out, out and about in the world. And I should have totally gotten her a St. Kitts birthday, or not birthday card, but postcard, and scratched it out and made it St. Kitty's. <laughs> because that would have been super appropriate. We also went to Puerto Rico, so we got to see San Juan a bit, and we went to, what was our last place? Grand Turk. So we were nice. eight days at sea, and it was, it was a pretty solid vacation. I actually, I do trivia contests when, on the boat, and last time I came away with seven wins, I think. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's probably the most I'm ever going to do. I should just get, get ready for disappointment the next, next cruise. First contest of the cruise, the night we left port, got a win. It's actually, if you're looking at the stream, it's the picture that's up right now. Is that first trophy that I got. And so I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm probably good. I'm probably not going to win very much after that. After the digital photography scavenger hunt, which we also won, I ended up with eight total wins for trivia. <laughs> and a bunch of second place. Like, okay, 
There was a there was one contest where it, they showed a cartoon character, and you had to name the cartoon character. And I think I remembered some of them from old ones because I have I don't know who Adam Ant is or who oh what was the other fucker uh uh Top Cat. You remember Top Cat? Wow. I, I don't fucking remember Top Cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm getting all of these right, and I end up with 39 of 40 points because I missed a character called Super Chicken. Fucking Super, Super Chicken! chicken. Oh. I, I had no idea who Super Chicken was. So I'm like, 39, all right, that's a pretty solid score out of 40 questions. So they get right down to it. Someone had gotten 40. And I, I, yeah, I almost, it was louder than I intended. I went, Really? Really? <laughs> and there's some kid up there who's like, yeah, really. I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> so I ended up with, like, I want to say a good three or four more that I lost by a point. In so I'm instances. kind of surprised after your eighth win that the boat staff will, didn't pull you aside and be like, dude, enough already. No. Because, That's okay. Like I was saying, there were lots of them that I didn't win. There were, there's actually tons and tons of trivia on a cruise ship. And one of the ones that I was by far the worst at, and it's something that I've never won, sports trivia. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and you'd think, as big of a sports fan as I am, I'd be actually okay at it? No. I'm terrible at sports trivia. Because I don't know who won the 1971 World Series. I don't know who was the MVP of the 1988 NBA Finals. Like, little tiny minutia like that. Oh, that's not even tiny. Like, winners of big competitions, that's, that's semi-major. Uh, you get into sports minutia. What's the batting average of well, the second-string batter from 1958? Well, they know no one's going to know that. But I, <laughs> I am shocked that that, that many people, or there are people who know who, who won the 1952 World Series or, or some such. Sports I want to say the Detroit Tigers. You're so being someone, lib. Someone look that up. <laughs> Listen, I can spout out about all kinds of random sci-fi and geek minutia. Uh, why, why can't other people do the same for sports? Oh, Yankees. Because I, I think... Yeah, I guess just, you could just guess the Yankees for everything. <laughs> there, was, there was one. It was NBA trivia. I swear every answer was either the Lakers or Celtics. Yeah. If I had put Lakers slash Celtics on every, an on every answer and then randomly scratched off one of the two, I would have gotten a better score than I had answering legit. Like, there was actually one trivia contest. It was horse trivia because it was on the day that the Preakness was happening. Oh. And I was like, I was talking to the host. I'm like, I'm just going to, I don't know anything about horses or horse racing. So I'm just going to sit here because I was already here. And I'm just going to put secretariat for every answer. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll and be right once. <laughs> it ended up just being about horses in general, but the secretariat question was awesome. It went something like, what part of secretariat's body was three times larger than any other horse? Oh. Now, my initial answer was his dick. Sure. Of course. But I immediately scratched that out because I'm like, mm. there's no way he could have won with like, he could have won anything with a thrice big horse cock. Unless there's like a roller skate strapped to it or something. Or something. Like a little wheel. Like just <laughs> a unicycle or something. <laughs> and so I thought about humans. I'm like, well, there are humans who have, who have bigger lungs and bigger hearts that do very, very well at the athletics. Even if Lance Armstrong had not cheated, he still would have been a great cyclist, which is unfortunate because he cheated and now he's not considered a great cyclist. But that guy, I think his heart is a little bit bigger, but not like, like enlarged, but just it, it pumps more blood. So I put, okay, Secretary Tart. Even though I know nothing about horse racing, turned out to be right. It was one know. of my wins. Not only were you right, but you didn't look like a dick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, trivia contests can be fun, um, uh, especially if you go into it um, thinking you know nothing and willing to just have fun with it, because otherwise it's just depressing. Someone, the host was actually asking, like, how I was able to get that many wins, and I was just like, I just go into every contest assuming I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. 
and then just, just doing the best I can. And that's how you have to do it. There we go. Someone put that on a motivational poster. Go that's into not, every contract thinking you're going to motivating. lose. <laughs> that's actually quite self-deprecating. No, it's a little bit of both. It's, it's inspiring. It's, you know, go in with low expectations and high hopes. I'm inspired. Me too. Why not? Set the bar low, and then you, if you set the bar real low, you, there's no telling how high you can go. So what it's else always, have you guys been up to? Well, aside from apartment hunting, I guess. Uh, what did I do lately? I ate a burrito the size of my head today. Did you actually measure it? Um, I did didn't you put actually, it in a hat? I, I did not put it in a hat. had no oh. hat to, which to put it in. I mean, I might be using hyperbole here, but not by much. It's Taco Tuesday, so, of course, the, the deals are there. And, uh, you know, my wife is telling me, you know, you deserve, a, you deserve to celebrate Taco Tuesday. And I said, you know, honey, you're right. So I went to a local taco place in, in, here in media, and uh, I ordered a taco the size of my head because hashtag treat yourself. There you go. Yeah. As far as uh, media releases go, I did want to talk about uh, a little bit of Marvel stuff. Uh, it looks like Jessica, a.k.a. Jessica Jones, uh, the next uh, Marvel uh, Netflix series, is changing its name just to Jessica Jones. Oh, that's kind of... Simplified. Uh, why, why are they doing that? Uh, I didn't see the rationale or the reason for it, but I can kind of see it. Like, the a.k.a. Jessica Jones thing, I mean, do you really need it? I mean, it, 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 it's a... Uh, it's a tie back to Alias, which I think isn't called Alias because of the TV show Alias. It was on the same time as the comic book show Alias. But uh, I can see that. Jessica Jones, just an iconic you know, character. You know, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones. That way it's sort it, of It was fits. kind of the odd man out. It was the one that wasn't quite like the others. With the AKA, it does feel like you're missing half a sentence. Aka. Yeah. And it had a little bit of an otherwise known as Shill the Great vibe. Which uh, Beverly Cleary fans should appreciate. <laughs> For the half of you out there, of our many, many listeners who are Beverly Cleary fans. Oh, there are a lot, I think. Oh, in the world, absolutely. But I think among our listeners, there's a decent number of people who at least appreciate Beverly Cleary's books. I'm more of a Judy Bloom kid myself. I'll take Peter Hatcher over... Oh, no, Sheila Tubman, I think, was Judy Bloom. I'm sorry. No, because I... Sheila Tubman was... Uh, was a Peter Hatcher uh, universe character. So, yeah. No, Ramona was the Beverly Cleary person, so I'm, I'm getting my things messed up. But Julie, Judy Bloom fans, definitely out there. Are you there, God? It's me, Jenga. <laughs> I actually did a fair bit of reading on the cruise. I will say that vacations with my wife are a lot less rowdy than vacations with other people. Well, They'd have to be. Aimless. Yeah, I, I, I would die if I had to do... A hundred chicken I, nuggets? If I had to do that all the goddamn time, then I, I would die. So having a nice, relaxed, uh, moderately beveraged trip is, is definitely the way to go occasionally. I will I say, Event Redacted was mostly spent just hanging out at an awesome German uh, pub so, or restaurant, I guess. So it really wasn't drunken frivolity and craziness. It was mostly just really good sausage. Well, it, you weren't the one with the boot. <laughs> that, this is true. Those of us in boot town were, were getting a little wild there. It was awesome. That's, be, that's because I was in sausage town. Oh, you know, oh, oh. if the mm. best thing people say about Event Redacted was that everyone was happy with the sausage, I take that as high praise. Yes. Also, Jenga, I never got a chance to tell you, at the reception, I need to know what all of that food was because they that didn't come... So yeah, good. It was amazing. And the, so the pre-reception uh, reception, everything had little placards saying what, what it was, which was awesome. Because then we sat down for dinner and nothing had placards. The, the group of white people at my table who were all having a bunch of fun were just like, hand me some of the orange stuff and some of the yellow stuff and some of the rice and the light brown and the dark brown stuff. We have no idea what any of it was, but it was delicious and color-coded. Oh, yeah. don't, don't feel bad, because the guy who was the wrong kind of brown, who actually does <laughs> like Indian food, still had to kind of guess what was the korma, what was the curry, and, and I think Izzy actually did a little bit better job than I did of, oh, of yes. identifying which was which, but it was, oh my god, it was so good. I knew there was naan, and I was super proud of myself that I knew what naan was, and then I gave up after that. 
<laughs> well, I, my wife picked the food. I mean, well, I was with her when she picked, but she made like the decisions. She probably knows the names better than I do. Like, I have a list somewhere of stuff, and half of which I can't pronounce because it's North Indian food. And you know, our family's from South India. Both of our families, and um, and I, I, I barely a chance to eat. To be honest with you, like you know how weddings are. Like bride and the groom, they get one bite, and then someone says, "Congratulations," or "Mazel tov," or "We love you so much," or "Don't eat now. We're talking to you." Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you tell your lovely wife that she chose wisely. Well, I'll give them a free plug. Let's do a little buzz marketing here for Akbar Restaurant in uh, Edison, New Jersey, who did all the catering for Event Redacted. Well, well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and, and then there was autos. And then there was the open bar. <laughs> got to got to know those guys real well. <laughs> oh nice. Gosh, I barely had a chance to visit. I think I went did one like I think I did two shots or I think I did one with you, Obo. I think you came over with something. Yep. And I then, came over with tequila. That's right, that's right. And then there was one I did with all the guys in my and all the people in my church. And then I think there was one more I did with family. So I only did three shots, which you know, for a wedding, is pretty dignified, I think. That, cho that choreographed routine that those kids did was amazing. Yeah, yeah. that freaking Bollywood performance in the middle of Event Redacted. What pretty the much. hell? I that was, was not expecting incredible. that at all. You see, once I saw those kids in bow ties, I knew something was up, that maybe they do a dance. I didn't think they had a whole skit, which actually tied into used elements that I know with. Like, by the, the whole line where, oh, no, I'm late to meet with my cousin. Like, my cousin and I, Jenny, we have a, this... Tradition of coffee club. After church, we go, we grab some coffee from somewhere, we hang out. No big whoop, right? And they actually worked it into the sketch. They pay attention when I talk to them, which they, those kids love me, I guess. They must to have done all that. They, they have to. That was yeah. not like simple sidestep, sidestep, grapevine stuff. That was really involved. Yeah. It was impressive. So Alvin, the guy who played me, He's actually part of Villanova's uh, Indian dance troupe called Nova Nasa. So he's a legit good dancer. I saw him at last year's Diwali show. And uh, props to you, Alvin, if you're listening. Because some of the kids in the, from church listen to the show. So uh, if you're listening, guys, you did a phenomenal job. And I love each and every one it, of you. It was awesome. And then after the, the, the incredible display of good dancing, the <laughs> equally incredible display of terrible white people dancing... Oh, it was so good. It, You're it was, welcome, by the way. It, felt it so was good. so bad, but it was so good. <laughs> I love how I love how the two of you are like, it was so good. You're welcome. I'm the white one who was doing the terrible dancing. Right, You're but welcome. I'm the one who's doing the terrible white dancing. <laughs> yeah. I, I was also, like, despite the color, I did not. Okay, despite the color and despite the fact that Jules made me look like I had moves, I actually have no moves. It's just, it depends on the partner. That's why my one dance with Izzy was so bad. She couldn't, like, bring out, like, my, my, uh, my inner dance mojo, whereas Jules, who is incredible, actually did. And that was, that was, that was amazing. I, I just, Izzy did just fine. It, it was, it, it was Everyone, mutually bad. It was so much fun, though. I was, thought I was going to die out there. Yeah, it was so, the, so much fun, and no one really cares. Like, yes, we were all terrible. Some of us less terrible than others. Me, super terrible. But you don't care. You're having no, fun. And no not. one expects anyone, especially after the Bollywood dancing, no one expects anything other than a white person step ball chain. Hmm. And honestly, like, I'm, as far as weddings go, and I'm not saying Event Redacted was a wedding, but I'm not saying Event Redacted <laughs> was not a wedding. You can say it's a fucking wedding now. It's a wedding. We were at your wedding. <laughs> it's just fun to call it Event Redacted. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, so... I'm not just saying it because it was my wedding, but it's honestly the best wedding that I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot. It was definitely up there. It was, yeah. it, it, not only did it have the, the experience that was the actual wedding and blessings and everything, then there was the, the rehearsal dinner the night before, which was, yeah. I was, thank you for letting me be there, and thank you for letting me bring a guest or two, because that was great. And yeah, thank you well, for letting uh, Jeff and I show up in jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> well, bridal <laughs> parties, so you kind of have to be there anyway. It's a rehearsal dinner. And then as for the musicians, I mean, it's just easier because everyone was there at the rehearsals. So we have to feed you. So I figured I don't care what you're wearing. Just come and eat food with us. And, and we super easy. appreciate it because the two of us stood off to the side the whole time going, we're, 
We're the crappiest dressed people here. Holy well, you shit. were also standing next to me and Izzy, and I gotta say, we were dressed to the nines. You, you two were snazzy. It was yeah. amazing. Listen, you you know, good. You, your event redacted makes me happy in a weird way that Luke and I don't have to worry about a wedding because I don't have to worry about trying to, to follow that. We right. don't have to worry about any of that. We're just going to have a piece of paper and some drinks at RTX, and that's it. And we aren't going to do anything else because we can't, because of lawyers and because We're, of government. We are going to have a, a lot of fun at, at, uh, at, at the Secret Rebel Base. That, we'll call it that. We'll call it the Secret Rebel Base. Yay! And it's, it's, because we're we're standing in defiance of evil empires of Canada, and the United States. We're, we're very, no, no, we're not. <laughs> it's less standing in defiance and more uh, cajoling them to work with us and do what we want them to do. But you know, Listen, fingers I mean, crossed. Do we actually have to stand in defiance? Can we just sit and sip up a Moscow Mule in defiance? I, yes. We will absolutely sip all the mules in defiance. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so who knows? Maybe uh, there will be a second event redacted at RTX. Well, that's exciting. And by event redacted, I mean Luke and I are going to show up at a bar and be like, uh, so we're married now, and this is going to be our, our honeymoon right here, right now. And, and, and as soon as you say that, my hands are going to be going for your boobs and butt, and, but they're not going to make it, and then I'm going to be like, whoa. <laughs> glad, glad I stopped short there. <laughs> Wait, there's a force field here, and I don't know why. I, I oh, it's called Mowage. I, I yeah. don't know why I can't make contact anymore. And <laughs> before we go, I have to talk about your contributions to my event redacted. Um, Lauren, the music was beautiful. I've never heard oboe in, a, in a, one of our masses before, and it, it blended in so seamlessly. Well, thank you. I, I had a lot of help from uh, your choir director and your other musicians, and... I would have loved to have played more if we had had um, more time, but I just, it was an honor to play, and I'm so glad I could contribute something to your day. And it was perfect. And Jonathan's speech, gosh, Andrew still laughs about that. Oh, I'm glad. I'm really glad. I actually, I, I being who I am, I, I keep looking back and I'm like, man, it could have been so much better if I had done this or that. I actually told the, the priest joke. At my next Toastmasters meeting, I was the joke master, and it killed. Nice. It was. Good. It got. It got as many groans and applause, and I got some actual feedback. Like people actually gave me the little feedback uh, tabs. The little pieces of paper, yeah. The little pieces of paper. It was great. Oh man! Now, did actually... you have to set that joke up by explaining that there, you were at an event that actually had twenty million priests? I did. I, I okay. actually said what I, what I had gone in to do and the circumstances and how uh, uh, holy men just kept coming onto stage and then <laughs> were, were instructed to speak very quickly and then they just kept coming. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a holy battle royale. Like there was a tiny car in the back and priests just kept coming out of it? <laughs> it was like a priest spawn point. It just gets, <laughs> it's pretty small and point. everyone that spawned was older and more priestly than the last that one. Was like, it, it was an ever-growing beard competition, and the guy coming <laughs> out was winning. Yes. <laughs> like, here's your young priest, here's your yeah. middle-aged priest, here's your older priest, here's your really old priest. Here's the guy who came off the top of the mountain to talk. Here's <laughs> his dad. It was amazing. <laughs> So the last one is actually the parish priest that Anju had her most of her life, and uh, that guy's daughter actually goes to my our church now. So, uh, so we were just gonna have him do the homily, but he came kind of late, so my brother ended up having to do it instead. But uh, but he did, he did good for rookie priest. He's really good with homilies. He'll work in Sports Center and Seinfeld whenever he has a chance. <laughs> he did just fine. It yeah, all just fine. And it was an amazing event, and I'm glad that you guys and everyone you know who came and you know was able to come, was part of it. And everyone even who wasn't able to come just sort of said, you know, hi, congratulations. Like, you know, Dop actually reached out a couple of days beforehand and said, you know, I know, I'm, just in case I don't miss it, you know, congratulations on your wedding. And I think, thanks, man, I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we were fielding tweets at our table, just people yep. saying congrats and wishing that they could be there and, and just tons and tons of that. I actually, I couldn't feel very many because my phone died. Aw. Which uh, was okay. Also, Jack... I, this may be a little off color, but I'm going to say it anyway, because why not? If I didn't know any better, I would think you were trying to set me up, because you gave me 
one of the nicer looking bridesmaids. I mean, they were all gorgeous. They they really all were. But but uh, the the young lady that I was escorting was uh, Bianca. Uh, no. Hmm. Although yes, yes, <laughs> but no. I didn't want to say names because yeah. But no, I mean, I, my my wife has very very pretty friends, you know. Yeah. But we just sort of, I think I lined it up based on, um, you know, family relationship and then age order pretty much for non-family. So it would be you, then Travi, then Sunju at the end. And I am looking forward to seeing all of the great pictures coming out of the event. Hopefully you'll be getting, getting some soon and then posting them as they come in. Oh man, Connor's video, I cannot wait. Like he posted a preview of it and man, both of me and my wife are so excited to see what you know comes up with. And then our, also our regular photographer, um, uh, Kyle and his assistant, Dan, they did just a tremendous job. I mean, I can say something about all the vendors that is good for the most part. Limo driver, let me not talk too much about that. Let's, let's leave yeah. that out. But, uh, but you know, it's funny. Like the, uh, I ended up driving to my own wedding in a 15-passenger van. And I think I can end on that story because, like, I'm the guy who runs Christmas Caroling in our church. And I always rent that. And it's the same guy whose van it is that ended up volunteering for the day as a backup. And I'm so glad he did because we had a little of a stenank, if you will, a mishap with the limos that resulted in me having to send those directly to my wife and then me piling up my family into a 15-passenger van. And I'm thinking how appropriate that this van that I've gone to basketball tournaments with, that I've taken to Toronto one time, that I've... Uh, I think it was that the same. Was, it was, was it that van? I don't think it was the same van. I got that from another uncle, but the idea that I've taken these vans and rented them from people all the time, like to do stuff like this, it's very appropriate that, you know, the 15 passenger van be the way that I get to my wedding after years of using them for everything. <laughs> well, it was a gorgeous and wonderful event, and we will keep an eye on your Rooster Teeth page for pictures. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I'll be posting stuff as it comes along. I need to really update my Rooster Teeth stuff. I've been sort of easing my way back into the site and trying to, you know, watch more of the content and interact with people again. I think Event Redact me had me pretty busy, but now, other than finding a place to live, like, my time is suddenly my own again. All of a sudden, I don't have a full-time job on top of my full-time job, which is pretty nice. And, and for those of us who don't haunt Facebook, we would appreciate you posting on the Rooster Teeth site. Yeah, yeah, <clears> I'll, <throat> I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm already back, but I'll be even backer. And maybe I'll even use the Gloop Shark group on, uh, on the Rooster Teeth and try and get something going there for anyone Ooh, who wants to hang out. Yay! That'd be like good. Maybe a full-time bar in the Gloop Shark group. Ooh. I'm up for that. I'm there up for all go. kinds of bars. Nice. And what's our plan for next week? Do we have one? Same thing we do every week, Pinky. Try to try to, over the internet? try to entertain ourselves and tell wacky stories. Indeed. And until next week, you can follow uh, Lauren at OboCrazy, Jonathan at Road underscore Block, and myself at Jack Edithil. E for Edward, D for David, A for Apple, T for Thomas, H for Halo, I for Island, L for Lily. And us collectively at Glib Shark. Our sound producer is Jonathan Cerna. Oh, I, I don't have anything this time. I have to, yeah. I have to mix it up. That's fine. And uh, our, our theme music is composed by... Uh, by Linnea Boyev, and our announcer is the inimitable Bob Ball. And so on behalf of uh, myself, Jonathan, and Lauren, on, and the entire Glib Shark staff, this is Jack Edithel saying, good night, good health, and... Man, I had a really good one last time. And good weddings. And, you know, Lauren, that's good. I think it beats the obscure reference that I would have made to Brave Star or something.